Hi, John Capobianco here, and we're going to be exploring how to turn your Gemini CLI into more of a co-worker than a co-pilot. Now, I'm taking this terminology from Jeremy Schulman, who is uh, as very advanced in this technology of MCP. And the idea is a co-pilot helps us as an individual, whereas a co-worker will help us collectively as a team. So how can we achieve this? Well, we can use the Slack MCP, which has bi-directional capabilities with the Gemini CLI. So we're going to turn the Gemini CLI into a co-worker. So if I do slash MCP, right? Slash MCP. We're going to see that I have the PyTS six tools and the Slack eight tools. So with these tools, we've enhanced Gemini to be able to reach into Slack, do PyTS things, do sequential thinking, do GitHub things, do ServiceNow things, look up in NIST, all kinds of stuff. Work with selectors MCP. Now I'm going to say using the Slack channel identified in your Gemini.md, please first send a message indicating you are here to help then help then read the last message where it says to start here and follow the instructions feedback with emojis and human talk to act as a digital co-worker collaborating with humans via Slack and MCP. Now this is going to ask me for permission likely several times to access certain MCPs. And, you know, again, back in the Slack channel, we have this topology image and we have some human instructions here from me that I'm hopeful we're going to allow. So here's the message. Hello, team. I'm here and ready to help. What can I do for you? And I've asked it to read this previous message and follow the instructions. So I'm going to allow it to get the history. See, it did a limit one. Now it did a limit two. See how it did limit two? So it literally can limit to the last couple of messages here and get the instructions. So now you can see it's deconstructing, refining the approach, we're devising a strategy. And I'm going to always allow PyTS, configure device. So we're off to the races here. It's taken the information in the napkin diagram and it's going to go ahead and set up, it looks like in this case, device router one, probably. Uh, let's just see here. So struggling with a command, what device did it use? Sub interface pattern overlaps with, so hopefully it's going to figure it out here. So see how it's doing no IP address, which is what we want. And then it's going to set up the encapsulation. Really wicked that it's able to, just like a human would, figure out the error message that it received. Oh, there's already an IP address somewhere. I'm going to have to remove that. So check it out. It's successfully configured router 1. The interface, the sub-interfaces, the NTP address, OSPF. Router 1 is configured. Now I'll configure R2 with the sub-interfaces for VLAN 30 and 40 and enable OSPF. This includes removing any IP addresses from the physical interface ETH0, bringing it up and configuring ETH01 interface. I'm talking about reasoning. I'm talking about learning from history. I'm talking about tapping into MCPs here. This Gemini CLI is, okay, so R1 and R2 are done. <laughs> okay, are they done? Like, really? Uh, okay, let's see, are they done? 
so exit show run and let's see what it has done here uh, okay so check I mean check it out we have no IP address and it's been no shut we have sub interfaces doing dot one Q it didn't touch the management stuff uh, it's set up routes and we're all set all right very cool so now it's going to go ahead and it's just moving along there's switch one with the trunk commands and it's done switch two with the trunk commands I see right I'll fix this setting encapsulation dot one Q before setting it to trunk mode it can reason it can learn from the errors from the CLI so it's going to fix these things and switch one is all set and now switch two is all set I would just wait we're not we're, it's still just setting up the network so <laughs> this, is that not cool though right so okay so now it wants to ping it's always allow so now it's going to try all devices are configured time to test I'll be, ping between R1 and R2 sub interfaces to check inner VLAN routing I'll start with pinging R1 then R2's VLAN sub interface and look at we have successful pings <laughs> Okay, so it knows it can ping to validate, and it's going ahead and it's done some pings. Okay, the first ping worked. Now let's ping from R1 to R2 for VLAN sub uh, VLAN 40 sub interface. And there's the successful ping. So we're pinging from R1 over to R2 here, uh, right from the VLAN it's see the VLAN table is not displayed but we are pinging from R1 all the way over to R2 here on the sub interfaces so we have cross network communication and now it's trying the other pings from R2 to R1 in the reverse direction so first we ping from R1 over here to R2 whoops over to R2 and now we're trying R2 over to R1 third ping is good now we're going to do the final ping. Did I write any code so far? No. Did I use Postman or curl or REST APIs or Python scripts or PyTS scripts? So now let's allow, allow it. Connectivity passed. Now we'll review the running configs of R1, R2, Switch 1, Switch 2, starting with R1. So did a connectivity test and now it's doing a final show run across the four devices. Because my PyTS has a show run tool, not just a config tool or a show show command tool. There is a specific show run config tool. So it's grabbing all four devices running configs after it's changed a bunch of things and tested a bunch of things. So now it's just moving on to the switches. This is really exciting and then hopefully we're going to get something back inside of Slack as a final summary. So focusing on config, remaining configs. So I got the configs. Now it's getting switched to. So one more device left to do. And now drafting a Slack report. Configured and <laughs> configured the devices, tested connectivity, reviewed the configs. I'll now report back to Slack a summary. Now I'm going to post all four. Oh, it can reply to a thread even. What? Oh my goodness, look at this. So here's I've here's I've successfully done with the emojis the whole way down. And if we look at the thread, look at this. It's got the running config as markdown for each of the four devices. 
Do you see what's happening here? Do you understand the power of what I've just done here? Okay, now it's comparing switch configs. Let's just, yeah, add Slack reaction. I finished all messages, configured the devices. I'll wait for more instructions. So it wants to just keep going here. I think maybe when it said here, I'll wait for more instructions. I should have typed a response before it continued. Um, so I'm just gonna let it do what it thinks it needs to do here. It's just running some new commands. See, look at show or IP OSPF neighbor. So we can see OSPF neighbors are up on R1. I'm gonna check neighbors on R2. And in here, let me do this. Let me do a smiley face. This all seems to be working. Thank you. Okay, so again, a digital coworker, Gemini CLI, can listen, so to speak, on demand, at request, to Slack channel conversations. It understands emojis. It understands context. It can take in files and visuals. It's multimodal, so to speak. So I can work with my team in a chat, you know, in Slack, and we can all have our Geminis and participate in this conversation and give their analysis, do the config, do the hard work. As you've seen, right? Here's a whiteboard that our team came up with. Here's some instructions, some context. Go ahead and do the thing. We read those instructions from Slack. We go do the thing with PyTS on four devices. We test it. We validate it. We get the running configs at the end of it and give all that context back through Slack with emojis and the new configs. We could go a step further and push this all into GitHub, GitLab, ServiceNow. Uh, we could derive a source of truth from all this config and put it into Netbox or Nanobot. I am telling you, you had better start using the Gemini CLI and model context protocol because this is really incredible stuff. This is moving from a co-pilot to a co-worker. And I want to thank Jeremy Schulman again, as usual, like he did 10 years ago with network automation for leading the charge in a true visionary way. And I'd like to think that I helped him achieve some of what he's done, but his terminology and the way he's looked at it and diced it up really makes sense to me. And I hope it resonates with you. So please reach out and connect to me. And uh, we'll see you real soon.